Okay, let's try this again. Yeah, that's a little bit better. So it's like a bluish green. And you can adjust all of this um, as, you, as you're going, as you're painting. But again, this is just You know, think of what you could accomplish realistically and out in the field, you know, and still have a, like, I guess if I was saying, you know, let's go plein air painting or whatever, I would be shooting for the design and the big shapes more than being able to finish a picture because that's just not going to happen. At least not for me, not in one pass. That's just, I already know it's too time consuming. And just from the experience of having gone painting enough, um, you're like almost rarely able to make the kind of dent that you want. Okay, so I wanna get a new green. Get a little bit too warm. So here is where you start getting these transitions, and it's a still should be cooler. So I'm gonna add white. There we go, because there's some atmospheric perspective. And then it moves into some gray. So it could be a field that hasn't, that's either been harvested or uh, the plants haven't come through. It just depends on the time of year. This looks like probably spring. Get a little smaller brush. Once I get going, I'll be using this one just to paint in some of this, those little specks of color. But I'd like to um, just get something down that's similar, that's related. Even if I overpaint, I know I can go in with a smaller brush and kind of like carve it out or chisel it out or whatever, however you want to see it. It's too much red. Well, this kind of stuff happens all the time. You just got to be careful about when you're mixing colors, how much you put down. Okay. There's a tree right there. A little bit more blue. But we're close. So everything should get warmer and darker. So 
that's not dark enough. You might have to go with almost straight blue and some transparent oxide red. More blue. There we go. So to me, this is where it's finally getting exciting. I really like to make tree shapes. It's tricky trying to find the right green and your trees should be three values so that they can read as realistic trees. At least that's what I found. By this point, you should be able to tell whether you you think your picture's looking pretty good, uh, if your value relationships are good, and whether you're headed in the right direction. After that, uh, the only thing you have to really worry about is going back and modifying your size relationships, meaning if this is too high, this is too low, and, and this is, Again, this is just like the first pass. This is not necessarily how I want how I want it to look and result. Because so I haven't put enough values into it. There's not enough value shifts. And, uh, you know, in case you're wondering, would I draw this out if I was out planner painting? Probably. Because there's a ton of information that... Uh, it's just h way harder to be able to do this on the fly unless you've done it, like, you know, a, a thousand times or something like that. <clears throat> but to be able to get consistency, it's so much easier to even have just simple lines. That way you're, like... You know, you're not guessing, you're not, you don't feel lost. And meanwhile, I have this green, I'm gonna go ahead and start painting down here. Or there might be a glare, not even sure. At least maybe maybe not for you, but there's definitely a glare for for me here. But it's okay. Probably make do. Just 
So the reflection's a little duller. Again, you want to get close. If you can nail it in the first, you know, obviously that's the goal. If you can nail it in the beginning, then that's great. Okay, so there are certain things that like how you get this green and that's a combination of yellow and white, lots of white. And obviously having the right blue will help, but we'll see if you can, we can get close with just using this one cobalt blue. Because it, it does matter whether you come at it from a green or if you come at it from yellow and that's closer to yellow and white than it is to green. So we'll see how it comes. And um, that's not bad. Buy a little bit more blue. Yeah, I kind of like that second one a little bit better. And then, uh, again, we're just painting this flatly. Everything that I, how I approach, you know, they're just shapes. In the beginning, they're just flat shapes. And then managing how many values that shape has and then how many, the color and then the temperature. So while I have this color, I'm gonna see, do I see it anywhere else uh, there? But it, it shifts temperature so it becomes a little bit more ochery. And it's right here, probably even more so. There we go, that's more or less what I, I think I see. Okay. Now, same thing with this. This, uh, these are Russian olive trees. I don't know if you have them out in where you're at, but uh, we're starting again with white, and then a tiny amount of blue. So I want to make a kind of a bluish gray. And then you want to have something, you know, because it transitions into a, a blue gray. That doesn't have enough blue. And it needs to have a tiny amount of green. Probably a little bit more white. That's oh, got too much blue. Not enough white. These are tricky because they they almost um it's really hard to get it to look natural um because in the light they don't they don't look normal they definitely stand out so I suspect that's gonna give me the biggest the biggest problem we'll see if I how I can solve this I usually end up making it go greener or bluer just because it seems to work better in the picture. And as a general shape, I like that. So now I gotta do the tops. And again, you should, um, you know, you gotta balance between doing the light, doing the middles, and then doing the shadow shapes. So 
I think if you're supposed to follow a step, you should do the shadows first, but I sort of feel confident enough to be able to add some light on top of it. So I'm going straight for the middle value. And I'm going for kind of generic, um, but still somewhat accurate. Meaning uh, the shape might be a little bit generic, but I want the average of the information to be closer. Okay. So, we're back to green, and then we skip that area. So I'm just sort of bouncing around. Sometimes it just makes sense to paint uh, the color that you already have, especially wherever it's distributed. You know? And it gets as it gets warmer, it gets it actually gets a little bit grayer. So I'm gonna add a little bit of brown, and then some blue. A little more brown. Oh, brown's very strong. Oh, I don't want it to be that brown. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Well, yeah, I'm just massing this in. Kind of a general way and this is just you know the way I paint and uh, you know if it helps to copy that for a while then that's something you can do if, if it makes more sense to you to do all your shadow shapes then that should be what you should do okay so we left this tree unpainted and let's see if this is the right green yeah I like that green just a little bit more yellow but it's pretty close okay that looks pretty good so far uh, there's a big field back here, but there's some green behind that. So I'll take care of the green first. Blue, oh, a little bit more of a middle green. Uh, more yellow. Green's tricky because uh, I think that's usually where people, green, greens and blues is usually where people disagree and how they see things. So I don't like the way that's piggybacking, but that's something I can fix later. And it has to do with value and maybe to some extent a color transition. And then I'll have to fix that shape because it's too flat. So Okay with that so far. We got some pale yellowish greens in the background here. So I'm just gonna paint this kind of generically again. Just stuff I can always, I just want the, I just want the impression first. Okay, now this is kind of a mess, so I'm not gonna, I'm gonna simplify it. Um, if I have more time, then I'll go ahead and address it, but I just want that green. Gotta get that right. Definitely a middle green, like a Incredible Hulk green. Oh, 
well, it's not quite there, but... My green may have already been contaminated. Okay, and that same green extends here. Kind of overpainting with the anticipation of going back into some of these things, but it's okay to overpaint a little bit so that you don't have too many gaps of paper coming through. And also, if you want to change the look of the picture a little bit. So I know there's brown there, I'll go back in, paint that. As you can see, it's just like a super complex picture. And this is why, you know, you wanna take your time and then edge control, some of the stuff is too sharp. So, you know, you go in and you fix it, you know, you can go in with a brush and make things, everything, basically everything is too, too in focus. And, um, it's not a big deal. Like that's the way some people actually paint, but you know, if I'm trying to, if I'm going to spend some time on something and I want to make it look more realistic, then it can't compete. You know, they, these, these shapes, because it's so wet, um, they're definitely going to be, they seem too sharp to me. Some simplifying here. Okay, so if I was going to go back into this, I would make all of this. A little bit lighter which I would probably do in the second pass and I would probably just say okay well this is you know this is a study and this is showing me the design so again I'm not a one pass painter I never have been, unfortunately. I could probably the minimum amount is two passes, but uh, I like to do uh, maybe four. Four seems comfortable for me. So, you know, again, like this idea that you have to be a certain kind of painter, um, you know, there aren't really any rules that say you have to 
that if you're a plein air painter, you have to get it all done. I mean, you know, that's kind of the idea that people subscribe to. I threw that idea out a long time ago because I'm more interested in the painting. Obviously, if you're passing through somewhere, then you're gonna have to settle for whatever you can get done in that amount of time. And uh, I'm not saying you can't get better. You know, obviously the more time, the more effort you put into something, you might be able to get to the point where you can do it in one pass. But usually what that means is you're gonna have to change the way that you apply paint. Um, You'd have to apply a lot of paint thickly and sooner and start making different decisions and that kind of stuff. But even if you look at people like Corot, um, they, like almost none of his stuff was done in one session, you know? So I really don't know where this idea came from where people think that you should do it in one session. Maybe people compare them, compare themselves too much to people like Corot or Sargent or So I know you can't see this picture but uh, I think at this point, it's not super important. You just want to see how this is developing. I think that's probably more important. So think of this video as what can I expect to get done in the first pass, okay? And then I will make the second part after we meet tonight. And then, you know, we will continue to uh, paint on this painting. Of course, if you have more colors and you want to use them, by all means. Nope, that was the wrong blue.
plants going in. Suture up some of these little holes in the painting.
All right, so I'll show you how to do some shadows and then we'll stop there. And then uh, we'll let you catch up when you get this video. So let's talk about, say for example, I'll show you. One of these trees, let's say like this one. So like how, how you would approach this and then kind of start carving out, or at least how, I'd, how I would approach it and how I start carving out some of the specific shapes. That's pretty wet, so this is about as wet as I can handle. I think if it's even, if it's wetter than this, then at least for me, I'm not, not really painting anymore. But as you can see now, what starts to happen. If you can see that shadow, it might even be, it might be kind of dark. Let me see if I can zoom in. this up and it's got a glare it's actually not this it's not as dark as what you're probably seeing a couple a couple shades lighter there you go there that's how light it is And the relationship of this painting this this up so you can kind of see but let's say I want to keep working on this now I'm working with a small brush and I'm just going in looking for some of those dark shapes Again, my expectations are still that I just want to get something down that has the feel as far as making it look specifically like that. You can really only do it once you feel like you have like an anchor or something like once it feels like it's going in the right direction more or less. Uh, it's kind of tough to know whether whether you're there or not, but at least you can take your cues from how it looks. And you might end up painting and repainting. But what's key is, some, you know, at least right now is how do I make this transition? Because right now I still have two values and I'm looking for that third. So not quite.
So now we have three, but it's still not the right value transition. So I'm gonna have to add a fourth. There we go. And I cut into my dark too much, so I have to go back into it and redistribute it. So, and as you can see, it starts to take on this like bush tree characteristic. And it's only because, well, it's only whether you added the right amount of values. So here's my dark again, and I have to make that, that jump in those specific shapes. So we'll stop right there, and let's see if we can get some angled close-ups for you. Actually, I'll zoom out so you can see the whole thing. So hopefully this helps, hopefully it wasn't too glared. I'm sure part of it was, I mean, that's just the nature of the trickiness of oil painting. I suppose what I could do is try and paint this at an angle so you can see it. But I'm sure you saw something that was worth your time.